I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation to speak at a very nice summer school. Um, uh, so my, um, what I would like to do in my lectures is to um, overview um, um, some kind of a vision approach to the geometric approach to endoscopic fundamental lemma in various contexts. So, um, and mainly, I mean, the, I mean, sketch of course the the, the main line in, in the proof of fundamental lemma for the Lie algebras, uh, um, but I really would like to emphasize an aspect that that could that should be generalized to um, many more situations. Um, of course, there's some kind of, uh, this kind of, of, of approach has been used in other other works, like in the way you work for the Jacques Perrault fundamental lemma. And also much earlier, the, um, in actually in my my PhD thesis for the Jacques Kier for, um, uh, fundamental lemma, and there there certainly is some some kind of very um, general framework that should uh, should be um, can be used to to deal with uh, at least any kind of endoscopic fundamental lemma. So that is how I I, I want to present. Um, um, so my uh, the plan is uh, have I mean it's entitled have a three part. So the first part is about orbital tangles. So what I mean is I, I will try to explain uh, a geometric interpretation of both local and global orbital tangles, and that I mean, I'm helped a lot by by uh, Tash lecture this morning who explained a great deal about endoscopy. Sorry? No, that's someone from Zoom. Okay. And the second part is about the, uh, uh, no, uh, no, cohomology of, of the Hitchin vibrations. So that is, I, I plan to explain this in my, the second lecture the, uh, today. So this is actually the most intricate part of my proof of the fundamental lemma. It's very difficult and very intricate. But uh, luckily, um, there's recent development. There's some other method of other generalization that should be able to make it much less technical and understandable and more easy, easier to, to generalize other situations. So I, I plan to report on that, mainly in the work of, uh, of Mick Lorini and Shende about a very generalized support theorem. And also in the uh, kind of different approach um, uh, using pedic integration by uh, by this uh, uh, by Goshenik, this and Ziegler. So all of this uh, still uh, relies on you know, on the first part, uh, general geometric interpretation of operant integral and so on. Uh, so on the third part, you know, for Wednesday lectures, I. Uh, uh, um, I, I mean, I, this is not done yet. This is very much uh, ongoing work, but I try to ex explain that uh, I or we should want to do some invariant theory that should pertain to some kind of the geometric interpretation of vision and from endoscopy theory. So, so I should add that it, uh, there's some kind of limit to this. You know, it can probably, it's very ad adaptable to endoscopic fundamental lemma. But for more, like more uh, ambitious fundamental lemma, like Yanis like it's a stable fundamental lemma, then there's kind of uh, uh, a really a big new ideas uh, is indeed it. So, all right, so this is really still about a comp you know, point-wise uh, comparison. All right, so, um, uh, So, you know, we start, uh, so uh, for today, I mainly in this invariant situation where G is of reductive groups. Over something K. And G act on, on uh, its algebras by adjoint actions. Right. So this is uh, the basic data, and for this, the, the, what you know, the 
what we are looking forward to is one to really to realize this with two G acting on some affi, maybe normal variety M with some assumption, but I don't want to, to go into that now. But we think about, for example, the very similar situation that G act on G by, by conjugation, uh, which should give rise to the uh, fundamental level for group in a kind of direct geometric way, not, uh, not need to go in through quite rather elaborate argument. It, um, uh, you know, Harich on the descent argument and so on, like uh, uh, that's what we explained this morning. Or you can also look at the, the many situations like uh, G acting on X1 times X2, X1 and X2 spherical varieties. In particular for, for, symmet for symmetric space. Symmetric space. And um, uh, also, there's another situation which is not, you know, depend on how we define it, but a fine normal not, may not satisfy, but it will be very important. So the last, last lecture is G acting on, on the commuting varieties. So this is kind of significantly more difficult than the, for invariant theory point of view, it's quite more difficult for two than the, the two first case. But somehow it's kind of the mother situation. So that's why you really need to understand this. Um, <coughs> or, sorry? For example, you know, we have x1, x2, xd inside g, so that xi, xg is zero. And g acting on this by simultaneous conjugation. Yes. <coughs> and so, of course, this is the from the, you know, at least the two first examples are quite meaningful for automorphic applications. But all, all these are, are, are completely um, you know, studied also by people looking on moduli space. Like the example symmetric space in the, in the, in the, in the world the people looking at hitching vibration, they're going to the hitching vibration for for real groups. And this, this will have, you know, to hit your vibration for, for higher dimension varieties. So this is very far away from any, any um, automorphic applications, but uh, it's actually very important uh, from this purely invariant theoretic point of view. So anyway, I, uh, this is all I want to mention about this. I, for today, in many, concentrate myself into this case, this very basic case. And, but on the way I try to, you know, to, I'm not going to give all definitions because you take more than two lectures, but I, um, I try to really try to point out anything that would cause trouble if you want to generalize uh, other situations. All right. So now in this situation of, uh, so G acting on its Lie algebras by, maybe I write it here, I'd like to have it here. So G, uh, then uh, you have this uh, called invariant theoretic quotient. G, you know, the which by definition is the, the spec of so the, the spectrum of the, the ring of, of G invariant function on the Lie algebras and uh, Erasers is gone. Oh, thank you. So we start here with now with F is uh, 
a local non Archimedean fee. And um, let, let's, let's start with the basic operator on let X to be a name in GF. But for many, I assume it's X to be regular semi simple. And uh, um, then for every function, now phi a test function, so a uh, function is moves and compass support on the algebra. Then uh, we define this usual over antagons of x of phi, which um, uh, we have to choose a, a high measure, which is going to be important. So I just put it here. So this is going to be the integral of g of f over g gamma of f of phi at one g minus one. This is x. So dg mod dg x, right? So dg is high measure on g of f. So if you choose that g to be uh, g to be unramified, then there is just one uh, reasonable choice. So that the volume of, of so defy reductive group defy over over the region of integers. It is one choice, kind of the best choice. But then the, um, uh, you see that this is, I mean, there's one thing that makes it kind of difficult just because it depends on too many things. So it depends on phi, test function phi, depend on x, and depend on this dg of x. So um, if x is fixed, then this, uh, but, but this is it is convergent because the, the orbit is closed. Uh, then this phi map to this upper integral of x, phi dg of x, is an invariant distribution. So this is the point of view when he, that I explained better. So in using the choice formula, but from the from the so in this point of view, the choice of this is kind of immaterial, it's another scalar is thin uh, invariant distribution. But from geometric point of view, you really want to look at other things. So if phi is fixed, then you want to see this as a function. As a function of x, invariant function. Right, and, and here the how to choose the measure in the intelligent way is important because you look where the function x varies, so the, now it's important. To have a uniform choice of of the high measure on the centralizer. So to make a, um, also the, um, we, you know, from, Many point of view actually more better to look at the stable of integrals. So we would look at the uh, S O of X it should be a phi D G X should be the sum of on Conjugate C class X prime that is stable and conjugate to X in the center touch we explained this morning. So they become conjugate when you go to the algebraic, uh, algebraic closure of F. There's finally many of them which are classified by uh, abelian group, um, a subgroup of the H1 of the centralizer, uh, OX phi DGX. Right. But for, um, you know, for uh, from the geometric point of view, 
it's actually nicer to look at this as not as a function of x, but as a function of a. So S O of a of phi. So no, I just forget about this high measure, for instance. The S O of x of phi, where a is uh, it's an image of x here. So uh, it's actually equivalent, at least for regular semi-simple class, that the uh, x, x prime are stably conjugate if they have a same image in, in, in the invariant quotient. So uh, we have, um, you can think of this function, so we have the stable and open integrals. Now one you have, uh, understand this, the choice, uniform choice of measure, and then you have a function of A. The function of a, the stable integral of a, depending on a, depending on uh, you know f point in this uh, invariant theoretic quotients, and also we have uh, the is kind of cousins, um, a little bit more complicated, which are the kappa open integrals. So we have this O of x. Now kappa is kappa is now some. Uh, it's the same kappa as in Tasso lectures, but let, let me just write something not completely correct, but you know, it's, uh, it's a, a subgroup of this, but just forget about these details. Look at the, some uh, uh, characters of these you know, cohomology groups, and then you have this, this thing of kappa is sum of x prime of x, and then kappa is again invariant of x, x prime. So the, the difference between x, x prime is measured by a class inside this, uh, in, inside this Galois cohomology groups. And then the over integrals of, of, uh, of x, v, dgx. Sorry? X prime. X prime, thank you. And so we really want to see this also as a function of a, right? But you cannot, because if you move from x to x prime, the whole thing is multiplied by these things. So you want to, you want to define, you can define a as o somehow x kappa phi. If you have, if you can choose, if there is a distinguished Conjugacy class within the stable class, right? So you can do this. This is much nicer when you can do this. And here you do have one because you have this constant section. Maybe constant. So in this adjoint case, which is not true for L almost never true in, in general. This is kind of the big trouble. This, uh, so in the adjoint case, adjoint accent, you have the constant section. You can use the constant section. Do you think that you choose a constant section or your group is given with a binning and data that uh, Well, in, 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 on, on the other case, you cannot make section in general. No, no, I mean, even if you can make another section, they are conjugate. So this is, this is independent of the... But they may not be rationally conjugate. You need to choose they 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 do. Yeah, but this is, you know, it, there's, there's one. All right. But, you know, the, that is one of the things that is one of the things why it looks very similar, the case of adjoint action and the conjugation action. You can you question, you do not have constant session, you have standard session in some case, not always. And then you have huge problem at this point, and at this point. And that is why, uh, and that is what, you know, in the case of group case, that is involved on this long, long chance that transfer factor. So it's really very, very mean. And the one of the things that make the, the poor fundamental linear algebra is much, much easier because by quote, you know that the 
you know, many part of the travel factors is one on the coastal section. So it's, this is the so that the one, one I want to emphasize one of the difficulties when you want to move on from this adjoint case geometrically is the, is the lack of coastal section. All right. So now. Um, <coughs> OG quasi speed, you speed if you want, yes. <coughs> so, um, but actually, you see that the corner is not completely perfect, and we have to come to hitching vibration to explain that point. But, uh, now, but now, let's look at the, the global operators. Uh, and now it actually is better to start it just from right away from some, now F is global fin. And now it's actually better just to start right away from some point A inside G mod G of F. And then I define um, stable open integral of A. Now phi is test function, so phi is in CC infinity of of G of A, so let we look at function fin, so I don't have this infinite class. This is just C C infinity on G of A, and so S O of phi. So actually, here they don't even have to choose the high measure of centralizer. It's going to be a sum over on X inside G of F by conjugacy, conjugacy class that map into A. So as Tasho mentioned, there's actually if it many uh, conjugacy class, but you can see right look at the sum, um, which is going to be open integrals. Now it's a short wide integral here, G of A mod G gamma of F phi of uh, adjoint G minus one gamma D of G, right? Because here we divide by the F point of the centralizer. I do not have to choose a high measure on centralizer anymore, uh, right? Of course, you know the you can if if I do, then I can write this as the volume of uh, g gamma of f mod g gamma of a with respect to some measures I have to choose, and then here I can write as uh, purely adelic integrals. Here you see immediately the problem that this volume can be infinite, right? Yes. So, so uh, this is not stable in the sense, right? No, 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 not stable. I just write this is not, it's not a stable distribution, yes. I just, yeah, I, sh I don't know, I mean. Even if you raise the S, as long as it depends on your A. Okay. A1, okay. A1. Sure, you can write like O of A, yes. So this is not a stable distribution, for sure. Um, but here, I just, uh, now, now just when the, the first point is that it doesn't depend on the choice of high measure on the centralizer. And, uh, you know, um, this sum, we actually finite sum, like that's why explained because the, the most of sub, um, almost on X is actually be zero. Um, uh, but this is this volume can be infinite uh, for for hyperbolic element. So regular sum is simple. Yes. Sorry. No, there's no gamma. This is X. Sorry. All right. So. How can I reach this? The uh, no, see them. Um, 
All right. So, so, so again, this is you know as a function of phi. This is not a stable invariant distribution. This invariant distribution is not stable invariant distribution. But uh, as Tasso explained this morning, you can actually write this thing as uh, a sum of the something that look. Uh, um, have some kind of of the kind of space stabilization. Can write this omega gamma phi of a as s o of a of phi. Now it really is stable on one integrals, uh, and I'm going to just write as sum of kappa in some in some group. I think uh, Tasso is right as kappa star or something. It's, it's some obstruction groups. And it become O of A of kappa phi. When kappa equal to one, then O one A phi is S O A phi. Is a stable distribution. Right. And kappa are, uh, are characters on some kind of uh, some. Some some co canon of this map from local to global Galois homologies. Um, all right, so um, so for for example, if phi is a product of a phi v for on the over place, then S O A phi is going to be a product of S O A phi v, right? So this is no trouble. But then there are actually some trouble with the kappa, right? Uh, because you cannot even write it as uh, it, it only defines, the, the local O kappa only define using the, the, the cosine section. But because in the case when you have, when you have, when you have uh, so given the cosine section, then you can decompose this all the, the, the other part is product over on V of F of O kappa A V. Right. So this is unproblematic, but this is problematic. This really depends on the on cosine section. Right. So um uh, so I you know sorry for stupid question I'm asking so the the um, the, there is no trouble when you, when you choose, doesn't depend on the choice of x prime x in the global conjugacy class. But when you want to write this carbon locally, then you get to troubles, right? It depends on very strongly on the other transfer factors. All right. So now we are ready to, uh, to give a you know, that I'm, what I'm trying to do now is try to give you a, a geometric interpretation of all these terms, uh, but mainly for this function. So for, for phi equal to one Cartesian function of G of O, right? For geometric approach, you can it's easily up, do with more very unramified function. You can do with ramified function, but then you get something that I don't think that you can deal with. Uh, but for group case, you can do with hacker operators and, something, and, and so on. Anyway, um, and um, the thing is that the one of the first observations to be made is stable orbital antigone is more accessible for to for to geometrization. So, 
geometric interpretation of local stable I think I just give you the result. I'm not going to, to go through the counting my exercise. So the thing is this from these pictures, this kind of I just put it here because it's very important to look at these pictures. Because it has the very much become different. You know, when you have action of G on G, you have can make the invariant quotient. So kind of the best quotient if you say within the, the five schemes. But then there's, but you lose a lot of information. There's something you lose. Basically, you don't lose any information. Is looking at the stuck theoretic course, right? To G mod G. And open integral is very much like uh, capture the difference between this. So the, so if you have A in, uh, now F is low confin. Local non Archimedean field. And uh, the four test function one is G of O. Then when you start with this, then you can write your S O of A. Um, one G Phi, phi is one of GO, DGX is now it, it's really the sum of a isomorphism class of X inside object, isomorphism class of object of this of this quotient that lies over over A. And then it to one other. So they, uh, they are actually finitely many objects. And you go one. The all, but the trouble is the it's like when you have, when you count in point on the group point, you finite many objects, then you want to one over the cardinality automorphisms. But here automorphism is, is locally compact groups. So I check the volumes. So this is going to be the volumes of the automorphism of X. So this is of the subgroup of the centralizer of X. So this is with respect to this measure. Right? So this is the formula. So it, you know, just literally translate from the integration, you can just get into this formula. So I, I don't want to, you know, I think it's pointless to explain why. Yes, of course. No, what, what, what? what? The group is... No, no, local open is converged on ways, right? It doesn't need elliptic or not. But the torus is not... Ah, sorry. No, no, the, this is automorphism. It's, it's, not it, the, it, it's not the, it's the intersection of the torus with some lattice, so it's compact, right? Yes. This is just literally the translation of the definition above to this. No, no, there's there's no O point. Oh, oh. O point. Sorry, sorry. Oh, point. oh but by the way, because because of this, phi is one own and A had to be oh sorry I'm uh, I can blame this to the to the heat, but uh, <laughs> no, it's O point. So the So here you have this and, and in the local situation basically you have the spec of O. It is A and look at on the map X into this line over A. Anything wrong? Just to explicate, the automorphism group is the O point of the centralizer. That's right, O point of centralizer. So the the F point of the centralizer is usually centralizers, but then because it's defined, there's something in G. 
do të jemë që intersekshën në bëgjë of all wisdom and wisdom tolës. Right. So now, um, I really want to get rid of this. You know, it's not clear from the harmonic analysis point of view that we need to, I mean, of course, this is, this is what I explained. You want to make a choice, uniform choice of centralizers. But I, I just want to, 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 to make this some kind of finite group. So this is where, uh, this is the need of the regular centralizer. All right, so um, so this is some kind of really, um, it takes a while to start to really to be convinced that really one need to do this, but that is some very essential for the, for the whole business. So I, I just come now to define the, what the regular centralizer is. So let G rec. There's G rank to be uh, the open subset of G, of regular element. For me, regular is not the same as Tasho. So Tasho is regular, so it's simple. For me, regular, it just means that the orbit has maximum dimension. So it can be regular, so it's simple, and it can be regular and impotent, right? So uh, when you restrict the, the map from G to G uh, to the environment quotient to this, this map actually, is, the map is, uh, is smooth. And the fiber are homogeneous. And uh, um, and also the when you restrict the if I over G denote the centralizer group scheme, so if your point X, you look at the centralizer, and then you restrict I to G rec, you get a smooth group scheme. So so I restrict to G rec. This is this is smooth and commutative group scheme. And formed on this, you can actually descend. This gives this give so that if the is commutative, that gives you the uh, E I restrict to J rec descend to a smooth group scheme of J over G mod J, which is a regular centralizer. So this is a unique smooth group scheme so that you have that chi, let me call this chi, chi rec, and then I put back chi rec star of j, I have an isomorphism with i, which is g equivalent. So this exists in unique. So that is the, one of the main invariant theoretic uh, um, input in, the, in this situation the existence of this regular centralizer, right? If you have two element, uh, two regular element, having the same characteristic polynomial, so to speak, then they are conjugate, a bunch of big close thing. And so the, the centralizer are conjugate. But the conjugation actually doesn't depend on the transporters. That's why it descend here, right? And there's another fact that I'm not, not going to insist on this, but it's important also that it can be extended to a map from KJ to R. So this is really the environment package that we need to the uh, to post it, and because of this, now a is um, a in this. Then you have the j a over spec o, so we can put back the regular group scheme here to to spec of o, right? So that gives me a, a canonical com, a canonical. Um, Integral, um, integral form of the centralizer, right? So this gives right to the, so you have that the J of A over F is the same as the I of, of X over F, but the J A of O is a compact open subgroup of I of X over F, whatever X that map into A, right? So that give, give right to these canonical measures. Uh, canonical measures, 
which is the uh, you know I think in in the uh, when uh, on the return trace formula they choose another high measures, but this is a measure that is more better when you look at this you know a function from a to omega kappa a. So this is a, a better measure. All right. <coughs> and now um, from this, I'm going to make some. Uh, uh, here's you really require some um, abstraction here. <coughs> Again, when, when, I, when I have this, I actually even have a better geometric interpretation. So again, I have G, I have G rec, I have this invariant theoretic quotient. Here I have I, here I have I rec, and here I have uh, J. Right. So another way to say about these regular centralizers is to say that the G rec mod G over G mod G is the job bounded by J. Right. So two points are conjugate, so there's only one object, right? And the automorphism group is J. So that what means that this is either J. Right. Another word I have um, now now is require um in a, you know the, it's at the B of J, so the classifying space of J at Simply, transitively, on this G rec mod G. Right. And the, the cost concentration very much is there to neutralize the job. When you have cost concentration, the job becomes trivial, it's just BJ. Right. And moreover, the fact that I have this map from chi J to I. Then I have option B of J act on on the whole thing on G mod J. Okay. So this is really kind of you know you, you know you need to just have some side to think about two two categories, but you know this you can make a quotient, and this is um, what it this is you can look at the quotient of uh, consider. The quotient of categorical quotient, I don't know, the stack quotient, stack, two stack quotient of G mod J, G mod by, by BJ, the whole thing over G mod J. And so this is, let me look at the denote by this thing is uh, G mod G. I'm sorry if a note has become a bit heavy. So, you know, it, this, this the map is to G mod G. And one of the first claim that this map is a nisomorphisms over uh, G mod G regular semi-simple, right? So where, you know, if you divide this job by B of J, so B of J acts semi-transitively on this. So when the mode now, it just gets get just one point. So this part divided by BJ, it's it just G, it's just the invariant theoretic quotient itself. So here it just added on, on the singular orbit, right? But over regular semi-simple and cartridge polynomial, there is no such singular orbit. So this is just an isomorphism. All right, and so, so now you can do, uh, now this, this being choosing by the, 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 the J of A of O, volume one, then this, you can write it like this. It just becomes the mass of the, of the category of X in G mod G of O, G mod G, divided by bj of o lying over a in g mod g of o. 
So that means that the sum over the isomorphism class of this and one over the number of automorphisms. So when I, I do this operation that I, you know, I have this stuck equation that I mod out by, by the regular centralizers. And this is, this is really the, and then what I get is it's just exactly the, the stable orbital integrals with the high measure be, being chosen for to be from the regular centralizer. All right. Sorry? Uh, where is Psi? Where is the Psi? There is a function. Oh, the Phi is only one, is also the, the, I just do it one function. Cartesian function of the, of the G of A. Yes, you see Phi is fixed. Okay, now, uh, So that is the, the local pictures. I have two expressions. Could you write this a little bit more clearly? I don't think it's very legible. So I have, this is actually a, a one category. This is actually not two categories because of this O. And this is just the, the set of isomorphism class of, of these categories, whatever it is. And one of us, the cardinality automorphism. So this is the mass. I should write this mass thing in the. Or the is the mass, the mass of the group of it, that it's just a set of isomorphism class. And you, so you're explaining what the mass of your group of is. Yes. Okay. yes, yes. So the mass is exactly the volumes. Yeah. When I decide that I choose the measure given by the regular centralizer, J of O, that is one one. That is, just, you know, you have only some automorphism group. That group actually already contain this J of O. So when I mod out by that, it becomes the... But now I have the, the same thing for the... So this is local pictures. So when you look at the map from the form on disk to this, this is A. But now for the global picture, I just have to replace this by, by a curve, see? This is smooth. A projective curve. Right. Uh, the only thing is this, if you, uh, because this is basically a file, this is projective, there's no, no, no such map, it's just constant map. So here, to make more interesting map, I have to twist by another action. You have, have a GM action on G by homotesy. So the, that is the one that uh, give you more ampleness. <coughs> so now, uh, so globally, so it has to do with some C, a smooth projective curve. Uh, over finite fin K. And I have to choose la and la bandon. Over C. And now I'm going to choose for A and look at the map from A is a map from C to G mod G times GM. Right? And need to mod out by GM, where GM is homotesy action. This is really to, to have more sections. And in the case of Hitchin case, here the origin case N is uh, to be the canonical bandone of the curve. So this is over BGM. When you map it to BGM, this is L. So this is the, my A. And then the, the global orbital integrals. So there is some, some, some function phi. 
So n, n can be write as O S of D, some divisors, and then you have some function phi of D that recording this divisor. So characteristic of function of O, but translate by, by these divisors. Then you can write this S O of no O A of phi. It's really just a map. Again, this is the mass of the group of it of, um, of map from C to G mod G. Sorry, sorry, this is G mod G mod G M. Now this is this is A, and then you look at the hitching the pair is, is G mod G. So G mod G, this is a uh, uh, E phi over A. So ons is about the difference between the stack quotient and the invariant quotient again. Right? Now just have add a, a little bit small thing that is this GM. And so again, this is just literal translation of the uh, operation. So you see, this is the, the oblong that goes, the lobe oblong I, I wrote. Uh, I don't know, maybe I erase it. Uh, maybe over there. Yes, over there. The one on the, on the upper board. When you want to count this object, you just get literally to, to, the, to the integral over there. For this very specific test function, depend on the choice of this divisor D. But now you see you have two objects to, to be looked at. The, the one is um, it this, but then the other one is also on the local side, you have to divide by B of J. Is B of J. What a difference. So, uh, um, <coughs> so on this, this is uh, that called this MA. This is actually hitching fibers. So we have this actually have, have a map from H from M to A. So M is just the, the group point upon the map from C to this. And A is when you induce this map, is A. Right. So every A you have the fiber M A, and for every A in A, you have uh, maybe let's do it over algebraic closed field, and then you have the J of A is the the pullback of A of, of J. So this is smooth group scheme over C. And, uh, um, and and let con PA to be the the um, the 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 group with the the Pika group with of J A toxins. Right. And Here, I think it probably it's my it's one hour lectures, right? Okay. Now, because of the fact that the, you have this homomorphism from chi of j, when you put back j into i, uh, then it derives here this map from b of j acting on, on G mod G. And that gives rise to action the PA acting on MA. And again, if you look at the, the you can look at the, the quotient M mod PA, then it becomes the mass. As group point, it's a chapter of the map from um, from C to G mod G. Uh, 
No M A mod P A. P A is the is the toxus. P A is the map from P A is a is a map from 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 C to B J. M A is a map from this. So G mod G M mod B J over over um. So now you may be why now you get seem to be fairly complicated, but why I want to do is want to explain this point. Because this will give you automatically the, the product formula. Right? So let um, assume that A, A is a map from C to this uh, characteristic polynomial space whose uh, image not contain it have non-zero intersection with the um, with the um, with the regular semi-simple part. So there is some open subset C prime on C. That mapping to this G regular semi simple on G on GM. Right. But now this 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 complicated stuff, as I explained, it actually an isomorphism over this, right? Because of a regular semi simple, uh, you know the the over a regular simple there's no singular conjugacy class. So this is an isomorphism. So there is no choice to lift C prime to this because this is an isomorphism. So all the choice are concentrate on the remaining point, so remain formal in this, right? So, the, so that is why MA is become isomorphic to MAV mod PAV uh, when V is in C. So this is the same stack as, as, the, as this one. So this is, as well, you can write it as M. Oh, no. No way to put it. If I put M B J. Now this is in global. I think I erased my, my, my local things. So this formula, the fact that this map, this, this quotient, this complicated quotient is as a nasomorphism over regular submissive locus, Imply uh, imply this formula that the the, the quotient M A mod P A is a product of a local quotient, which is actually the stem that give rise to the to the S O of A of T is a product of S O A of V V. For V, the play that is not mapping into the regular semi simple locus. All right, so this is the stable. And again, just like in the counting point, uh, just as in the pre-stabilization, we should have a same thing for kappa. Right? Identity for kappa, but that, that requires, um, that requires the, the choice of course section and so on. And um, again, the, uh, it is not completely innocent because uh, you have course section here but there's no way to make it compatible with GM, right? In other words, the, this is the job over, over this invariant quotient bounded by, by J, and it, it being neutral is equivalent to some class H2 in J is trivial, right? And it is trivial because the quotient section but when you can do the same thing when modeling out by GM, then it's no longer trivial. This is non-trivial class. And this is a class that we have to deal with on every situation. That's very likely to be related to the long, long sense that um, uh, transfer factors. Right. So that's it. So that uh, just to before the break, I, what, I, you know, um, what I was set out to explain to you is to use this sign from this 
basic diagram from invariant theory. It, it, you look at the action of G on the Lie algebra. So you have two quotients, the stock peak quotient and the invariant theoretic quotient, right? And then you evaluate it either over a formal disk or over a curve, right? That give rise to different, either local or stable local orbital tokens or some kind of the hitching fibers, right? And um, you can explain the pre-stabilization purely in, this, in, this, in these terms. And uh, also, the, another thing is, is actually it's much nicer to work with system by vibration rather than this kind of arc spaces because uh, in this situation with the, uh, over a curve, you are doing very much in kind of classical algebraic geometry, this, this kind of um, finite dimensional, locally finite type, uh, acting stack. Uh, so on the Usually, tool algebraic geometry applies, so right? for arc space, tools still need to be developed. And actually, the file, um, uh, it's much nicer also. So, what i uh, going to try to explain on the second part of this, this, this talk is how to, um, you know, how to, uh, you know, to control the common hitching vibrations, which uh, in the, um, and then in fine control the orbital goes.